Institutes. While many of his classmates decorated their dorm rooms with posters of Uma Thurman on a bearskin rug, Why? I know, my generation was Morgan Fairchild. Or, uh, um, Brian Kunkel's walls featured scantily dressed nematodes and trilobites. Ooh, check out that thorax. <laughs> Arriving at the University of Delaware in 2006 via Northern Kentucky University and Ohio State University presenting on behalf of the University of Delaware faculty, please welcome Brian Kunkel. Thank you. Uh, today I'll give you a whirlwind tour of insects that we encounter in and around your landscapes in the home in the spring through fall and winter. Here we're going to start off with brown marmorated stink bug eggs. Yum. Yum. The eggs are laid in groups of 25 to 28 and as you can see the nymphs they come out and they feed on the leaves. As they feed, they stay uh, around the expelled eggs and then move out into various gardens and trees and shrubs. As they're feeding, they assume the coloration close to their parents. They don't fly. They have wing pads that we can see here. And they feed from late or early June all the way through until August when they become an adult. Now this is an invasive pest, not originally in the United States. The way we can tell it from others is it has these white bands here on the side of the abdomen and two bands on the antennae. As they feed on the plants, they take this long probe or piercing mouth part and jab it into the plant and suck out plant fluids. And they feed until September when they migrate to pay you all a long winter vacation. Not all stink bugs are bad, however. Not all stink bugs are bad. We have the spine soldier bug. It is a predator of caterpillar pests in vegetable gardens and ornamental plantings. So this is a good guy and does not need to be squished. <laughs> Bed bugs is a common pest that we're hearing about. It can be found on head headboards and seams along the mattress. An adult and two nymphs. Also, they can be found on upholstered chairs or couches or on the underside of recliners. They leave telltale stains that we see here. Also can be found on mattresses. We have an adult nymphs. They like to be in tight locations or along the seams where it's tight, close quarters. Ants in the spring are often a problem in the home. They uh, Depending on your species of ant requires different types of products for maximum control. However, they're also found in the landscape. And in the landscape or your yard, they provide a wide array of beneficial effects on pest species. They eat Japanese beetle eggs, caterpillar eggs, caterpillars, and Japanese beetle larvae, or the white grubs that destroy your lawn. Cicada killers is a wasp in mid-July that chases your kids when they're bad, even when they're good, and pets. The males cannot sting, however, and the female only digs a hole in your yard to bring a cicada into it to lay her eggs. Here is a parasitoid that attacks aphids and caterpillars, a, paras or a predator fly larva or a maggot that eats aphids, and then everybody's familiar with lady beetles. They all provide biocontrol in the landscape. Landscapes or your yards with a wide array of plants, a diverse array of plants, reduces pest pressure or reduces the need to make pesticide applications. So tolerating caterpillars, such as this cool one here, as it's feeding on your magnolia, allows you to see really cool butterflies like this uh, papillionid. They uh, are serving as a food source for animals. This is a variegated caterpillar. It'll feed on your pansies in your flower bed. If you tolerate them, you'll get to see the really pretty orange and black butterfly flying around your yard. This yellow neck caterpillar has two color morphs. When you bother them or shake the limb, they all get kind of spooked and rear up in a C shape. They do some damage to the leaves, but don't affect the health of your plant overall. No treatments needed. Here we have hummingbird moths. Most people like hummingbirds. These act very similar in visiting flowers, often in the afternoon through early evening. Who likes tomato hornworms? 
Mmm, yum. <laughs> they were in this. They were kind of tasty, like uh, wet peanut butter, but the hummingbird wow. balls uh, will f look like a tomato hornworm. Don't squish them. They're a food source for birds and other insect predators. Speaking of birds, allowing insects to persist in your landscape provides food for these critters. A lot of people like to bird watch. Allowing insects to be in your yards allows you to see more birds. And then my favorite are the jumping spiders. They also will feed on a number of caterpillar pests, and they are beneficial. So let's give insects a chance to try to help us control those that we don't want to have around. And thank you very much. Good. Get a rug. I want to thank you for this here too, by the way. Mm, brown marmorated stink bug eggs. I should just pair with a 60 minute IPA. What goes wrong with the hornworm thing you were talking about, huh? Wow. The peanut butter. The peanut butter. There we go. Our next speaker. <laughs> Electric